It has to be an eye catcher. That much is clear. And you can tell. We are working on the garden railroad and the sun's coming out. I'm so thrilled when the engine is up and running. It is such a beautiful locomotive. Work on the second club model is in full swing at the Guppingen plant. After the die casting department has delivered the housings, it is time for the next steps to create a perfect model of the VT92.5. The emphasis is on a mixture of manual labor and automation. Here you can see an automatic process for brush deburring with two brushing robots that automatically remove the parts, brush them and put them down again. We make sure that the process runs seamlessly and that the parts can be neatly transferred to the next step without any issues. With the naked eye you can see if there are any parting lines or a slight burr, tinsel burr, on the lower edges. This should have been removed and the surface should look completely different after the brushing process than before. You can clearly see the dividing line right here. And after the brushing process it has nearly disappeared. Then the castings either move on to manual debarring, which the machine can't do, or on to delivery. In fact, there are some places that still need to be worked on by skilled hands. Optical inspection is essential. After that, the housings go into the spindle drilling machine. Their openings are made for the lighting and windshield wipers. After the electroplating department, it is the painting department's turn. First, all the housings are given the basic color, crimson, RAL 3004. In the process, the parts are all sent through the spraying machine twice, so that the color coverage turns out perfectly. Using pad printing, the half o models next receive the railroad inscriptions and the fine trim lines that are so typical for the vehicle's look. The printing of the curves on the test VT is a challenging task. The prototypical lettering is done in the color sand yellow, RAL 1002. Even the smallest numbers and letters are perfectly legible. Later, in the assembly department, the female employees look forward to the neatly printed housings and many other components from which they assemble excellent models. But let's take a peek right away and experience the first drivable handheld model of this standalone object on the layout. The VT92.5 tows an authentic-looking express train car set. It consists of four differently constructed Deutsche Bundesbahn types in the operating condition from 1958. All of the cars have standard LED interior lighting and current conducting close couplers. The interior lighting is provided by the VT and can be switched digitally.
A special eye catcher is the fan wheel for the cooling system. It can be put into operation digitally on the model. Please note, the order deadline for these models produced exclusively for Insider and Tricks Club members is August 14, 2021. The DB Vehicle Maintenance Facility in Cottbus has repainted a locomotive in its own design. And what came out of this is, in my view, quite an attractive locomotive. It was presented at the Vehicle Maintenance Facility in Cottbus. Yes, we are meeting here in a very traditional place. The plant has been around since 1874, had to be rebuilt because there was a major fire here in 1968. And then we turned a former Reichsbahn repair shop in Cottbus into the Cottbus plant of the DB Vehicle Maintenance Facility for the Deutsche Bahn. There were years that we don't really want to talk about because those were not positive times. And now the plant is getting up again and has a huge future ahead of it. It is a very special event, because for the first time in the history of model railroading, the two long-established companies Märklin and Pico are jointly presenting a replica of an original. Pico will take on more of the DC model overall, more your target groups, and Märklin will take on the AC model, both in half O, same gauge, 1 to 87 scale. In addition, Märklin will also launch this interesting prototype in 1 to 160 scale under the Minitrix brand, and in 1 to 220 scale in Z or Z gauge. Just a few more moments before it's time to roll out. Open the gate for a diesel star. A highly symbolic design. It reflects Cottbus' importance as a location. The fact that we came up with the idea of depicting the long history of the plant. At some point we started with steam locomotives, then the idea grew. You have to let that roll off your tongue. To serve ICE traffic here, to do the heavy maintenance for ICE vehicles, in other words, to get into high-speed traffic, that fills me personally with pride on behalf of the staff. Yes, and it was precisely this stuff in Cottbus that also made a significant contribution to the success of the design by creating the draft for the design in a competition. The managing directors then unveiled their models, which were the result of a remarkable collaboration. We were both surprised that we were working on the same model at about the same time. So we said we wanted to make a virtue out of necessity. And neither wants to hurt the other, each has its target market. And that's why we said quite clearly, listen, we address our customers with the model, you address your customers with your expertise. And I think it's a very sensible approach that we found. I think the industry as a whole wants to be invigorated. For us it's important. How can we introduce more young people to railroading, to model railroading? It is, I think, one of the greatest hobbies in the world, and so it was important for us. How can we shape that together? And I think it's a very nice solution that we found together. Macklin takes advantage of the moment to do a little model maintenance on its 218. 
vielen Lokomotiven der Baureihe 218. Many Class 218 locomotives have a very distinctive face, and that is the snowplow, also called railguard. And this railguard gives the locomotive a much more distinctive, stronger, brawnier look. We haven't had that on our models so far, because we've always had prototypes without a railguard. With this locomotive, however, we have finally implemented it, and I think it's a great success. And it also gives our model locomotive a much brawnier look. On the new turntable, the hand-built model was allowed to do the same as the prototype. The locomotive is up to date. We have installed a World of Operation MFX Plus decoder. We have implemented prototypically the beautiful roof with a large roof vent. We have switchable cab lighting and extensive sound functions. This locomotive will also appear in our Minitrix assortment. And for those who want it even smaller, we will also release this locomotive for Z or Z scale. The Maclinium is open for visitors. While indoor rooms full of interesting exhibits are open to visitors, another outdoor attraction is still in the making. Hey! Heavy equipment is being used. This is the preliminary work for the large LGB layout, scale 1222.5. We have been working for a week, you can see it quite clearly in the background. We will design, build and play with 120 square meters of garden railroad. We are already looking forward to it. The layout construction team will not only work on the half O layout in the Maclinium, but also play with the garden railroad. So far, we have taken out about 60 tons of soil, and at the moment 50 tons of gravel have been brought in, which will be compacted today. Then a good 5 to 6 tons of fine grit will be added. We have already published the track plan in the dispatch, and it can also be seen on the internet. And you can see it, we are working on the garden railroad and the sun is coming out. We are going to build it very high. We also want to install a cogwheel track. You can see this grey grid in the background. We want to cover it with some landscaping, of course. A river course and a small lake are also planned. Of course, these are all specifications that we are developing further on the basis of the track plan. We are thinking about the heights we want to go to and what the landscape will look like afterwards. A good motto to go along with, and besides, variety is key. We start with the Saxons and go through Switzerland to America, so I think there will be definitely something for every visitor. We'll keep you up to date with Maclean TV, of course. The same applies to the construction projects on the half O layout. In many sections, the trains are already rolling smoothly over the K and C tracks in continuous.